Well, good morning, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I am out on this beautiful spring morning hiking along the other end of one of my favorite trails here in Southern California. And I'm really looking forward to this morning because if you saw my other video of coming across a great deal on a very lightly used <clears throat> Canon 5DSR, um, you'll know that I'm always scouring eBay for great deals and I found an excellent one on a very lightly used Canon R5. So I've been thinking for a while how I can improve the video work that I do and uh, one of the options has been finding a way to get rid of the crop factor of the Canon R that I'm shooting on right now and um, and also to see if I could get some 60 frame per second type work in um, and I also just wanted something I could carry around when I'm not carrying my full bag and expect similarly good image quality as my 5DSR so it took about a year but I finally found an R5 that was discounted enough that once I sell my Canon R, it'll be financially compelling enough to upgrade. So I am out here this morning and I uh, found a couple cool scenes. And today I'm going to test out the image quality of the Canon R5 against the 5DSR. And even though that will become my new hybrid camera, uh, I still want to see how it performs. Um, not getting rid of the 5DSR anytime soon. Um, so yeah, it's a perfect calm morning here along the trail and uh, let's fire up a couple test shots. Okay, this first scene that I found, I think will make a good test comparison image between the R5 and the 5DSR. It's not exactly the best composition ever, but uh, I kind of like it. Um, it's a little bit of this winding section of the creek with a few boulders in the center. And I'll up the brightness so you can see on the back of the screen. A little bit of reeds on both sides and some of the trees behind it just catching the side light from sunrise. So um, it'll be a great test for both detail and the dynamic range of the Canon R5 versus the 5DSR. And uh, I'm a little bit bummed because when I first got down here, I don't know if you can see, there's just a little bit of mist coming off the water. Um, so I think I just missed that by about, I don't know, 10 minutes. So I definitely think I'm going to have to get here a little bit earlier next time I do this end of the hike because that was pretty cool looking. But anyway, I think this looks like a good first image of the morning. I'm going to put on a two second timer because I don't have the cable release for the Canon R5. I'm focused right in on the reeds to the right side thinking that as the water retreats back along the bend uh, it might just slightly get softer. I will be using the same settings on both the R5 and the 5DSR. Same exposures, 1 50th of a second f7.1 ISO 100 on the 100 to 400. And I'm right at about 190 millimeters. So I'm gonna grab this image. It's the first one of the day. All right, so now I'm gonna swap out the R5 for the 5DSR. I'm not going to touch a thing except swap out the body.
Okay, as you can see on here, on the back of the camera, I have the exact same settings. 1 50th of a second, f7.1, ISO 100. And I didn't move anything on the lens or the tripod while setting up the shot. I focus right in on the same bunch of reads to the right. So I'm gonna grab this image. Right, and now for the sake of fairness in the comparison, I am gonna do the exact same image on the Canon R, which was my main camera for uh, a little over a year and a half. And it is a fantastic camera, so I have no complaints and I am fully aware that I am really nitpicking as far as image quality is concerned. I'm gonna go into manual mode so I shoot the exact same scene at f7.1. ISO 100 and 1 50th of a second, but I'm going to adjust ever so slightly to 1 60th of a second because it is getting just a little bit brighter. Uh, it's been a few minutes since I took the last image. Um, and you can see on the back of the camera, I am focused in on the same set of reads. I'm going to use a two second timer to get the same exact image. 1 60th of a second to keep the exposure the same. Now let's see how the Canon R compares to the newer R5 and the older 5DSR. Well, I am back in my studio and I pulled up the three images to compare in Lightroom. So the first thing that I notice is between each of these photos, whether it be the R5 5DSR or R, it's hard to tell much of a difference between any of these from at least a very high level view. So I'd say for 95% of photography work, the R is just as good as the other two when it comes to pure image quality. First off though, I want to compare to see what the difference is between the newer R5 and the 5DSR. So I set up the R5 image here on the left and the 5DSR image here on the right. And I did a little bit of color grading to make sure they're as close as possible between the two images. But other than that, um, no major updates or edits. So one of the areas that I wanted to compare between the R5 and the 5DSR is the detail capture. So I'm going to zoom right into these reads in both scenes, uh, which is where I focused when I took each of these images. Right off the bat, zooming into 100%, there is truly exceptional detail captured with the newer R5 um, as expected, which compares really closely to the 5DSR image quality. When I zoom into 100%, though, I am seeing a little bit more clarity on the 5DSR image compared to the R5 image, although. I would say for most purposes, the R5 image is 99% as sharp as the 5DSR image. It's not until I zoom into about 150% that I start to see a little bit of the difference between these two bodies where the 5DSR just has ever so slightly crisper details. For the vast majority of purposes, this level of detail capture isn't going to be apparent, and I truly only expect this will show up in the largest of prints, um, or if you just wanna have the most crisp image possible. And for the sake of fair comparison, I did wanna compare the R5 to the Canon R. So if we switch over to the R from the 5DSR, you'll see right away, even at 100%, that the detail captured in the R5 is quite a bit more than the R. And if I zoom in to make these approximately equivalent sizes, you can definitely see the benefit of the higher megapixel count with the R5. Again though, this is really pixel peeping and for the purposes of most images, if you zoom out all the way to see the full size image, I'm not seeing a ton of difference between any of these three bodies. So it really comes down to personal preference and how much detail you're looking to capture.
Well, I did hope to have an opportunity to compare the dynamic range between the three of these bodies in this scene. However, I think I'm going to hike a little bit further up the trail to find some more challenging light to put these camera bodies to the test. So let's head back to the trail. One other thing that I really like about the R5 is the ability to switch between the movie cropping mode. Uh, right now I've got my 24 to 70 2.8 attached, zoomed all the way out to 24 millimeters, and with the full frame 4K, I'm able to capture quite a bit of this scene. Though as I did just a moment ago, I can swap to the movie cropping mode, where it zooms in the 1.6 times, and it effectively makes the 70 millimeter end of this lens uh, about 100 millimeters. So really adds a lot of versatility, and I can now attach this 24 to 70 weather sealed lens, go out in any conditions, and be able to capture just about any type of video with those two options. So uh, it's a point that typically isn't discussed when a lot of people talk about the benefits of the R5, but for my purposes, I think it's a, a huge advantage. I'm not sure if there's an image back in here. Uh, I kind of thought there might be, but uh, it just, I'm not quite feeling it, so I think I'm going to keep hiking, and if I change my mind on the way back to my car, I might set up a comparison shot between the R5 and the 5DSR, but I think for now, I'm going to keep hiking, see if I can find some other interesting scenes. I wandered a bit further up the trail, but the trees are thinning out a little, meaning more and more harsh direct light on any type of scene that I think looks interesting. So I've decided to go back towards my car and the way that I just came in. And I saw a cool little spot along the lazy river that I'm gonna stop and have a quick breakfast, but I might head back to that scene I shot just a little bit ago and wasn't expecting to have to wander back so soon. I just don't really think I'm going to find much worth shooting back behind me. Although, I may have just found something right now. I didn't notice this giant tree when I was walking the other direction because it was behind me, but sure is pretty interesting. It's in shadow. has a lot of branches coming up in all directions, so it'll be great for both detail and the dynamic range ability of both cameras. So I think I might pause here for a few moments, set up, and do a test comparison shot. All right, so I got this image all framed up with this gnarly looking tree across from where I'm sitting on the trail. And if I up the exposure ever so slightly so you can see the back of the camera, you can see it pretty much fills the entire frame. I'm right in at 70 millimeters and going to do a couple different images to compare. I'm going to do one with just normal settings, ISO 100 f9 and about 1 40th of a second shutter. But then I'm also going to take an image where I dramatically underexpose the image at ISO 100 by three stops to see what the impact is when I lift those shadows. And then I'm also going to do another image with higher ISO uh, so I can view what, I don't know, ISO 800 looks like. So I'm going to grab each of those three images right now. And now I'm going to switch over to the Canon R5. Well, I've switched over to the R5. 
with the 24 to 70 2.8 Mark II. I am at 70 millimeters again, set at the same aperture, F9, ISO 100, set at 1 40th of a second. So the exposure is going to be identical to the 5DSR. And I've got a two second timer. So I grab this first image. Perfect. And then the second one that I did was three stops underexposed at ISO 100 F9. So the same 1 200th of a second. All right, so we'll see how those lifted shadows compare between the 5DSR and the R5. And then lastly, I did an ISO 800 image comparing the image quality at ISO 800, um, which I very rarely ever go up to, but occasionally it does happen. And it's nice to know that um, I'll have the option if needed. I don't typically push the 5DSR to that level, but if the R5 takes as good of images as I suspect, um, I think it'll be great to have that backup for when the light is even more challenging than normal. So ISO 800, F9, 1 200th of a second, same scene. Now lastly, I'm gonna switch over to the Canon R and do the same series of three images and um, get that back on the laptop and do some comparisons. Okay, so I finally got back and uploaded all of these nine images into Lightroom. When I zoom in to 100%, I'm seeing pretty exceptional detail in the R5 image, which was uh, pretty much as I'd expected. I focused right in on this section of the tree, right at F9, so the vast majority of the image should be nice and sharp. Looking through, I don't see any areas that aren't sharp, so this will be a great comparison image. So next I'd like to compare the images between the R5 and the 5DSR. So at a high level view, they both look very comparable, and I suspect the same on the R as well. Um, all three of these images look pretty much indistinguishable when viewed at full size. So once again, the argument that the Canon R is an exceptional performer holds true, even in what was a fairly challenging lighting environment. So I have set up a comparison between the R5 here on the left and the 5DSR on the right, and zooming in to 100% right in the center for both images. The detail looks pretty comparable as I saw earlier in the morning. Although I do think once again, the 5DSR has just a touch more detail. Although really at this point, it is very much splitting hairs. If we look at, if we look at some parts of the image, it looks like the focus might've been ever so slightly different between the two because in general these two images look to be about the same. When I zoom in even further to 200%, I mean again, seeing very similar levels of sharpness and detail across both the 5DSR and the R5, although it does look like in some areas the 5DSR has ever so slightly more detail capture. However, I think that what's more likely going on is that there could be either a slight bit of motion blur because of the breeze that was going through in the morning, or possibly just an ever so slightly different shift in where the focus point is in the image, leading to some parts being just a tad bit softer. So if I find the same part of both of these images, I'm really finding it difficult to say that one is sharper than the other. Maybe a hair sharper on the 5DSR side compared to the R5, but it is very, very close. So I think for 
the majority of my shooting cases where I'm shooting at uh, a relatively small aperture, ISO 100, I'm not going to see a huge difference in image quality between the 5DSR and the R5. For comparison purposes, we'll bring in the Canon R, which as you can see, the R5 is capturing quite a bit more detail than the R in just about every circumstance. But that being said, the detail captured in the Canon R still looks spectacular. And I don't see anything in particular that is really a knock on the R's image quality. It's still a very clean, very sharp image. So the next view that I wanted to compare was the effect of lifted shadows and to see especially the dynamic range of both sensors between the 5DSR here on the right and the R5 here on the left. So in the field, I underexposed this scene by three stops for the R5, the R, and the 5 DSR, with the end goal being to see how each camera sensor handles shadow recovery and really put the dynamic range of each to the test. So if we look closely at the R5's image, you can see that some of these areas were appearing almost totally black. And when I lifted the shadows, even at 200%, it performed uh, what I would consider to be quite well. Zoomed out to even 100%, there's a little bit of loss in color fidelity, but still a pretty remarkable performance, all things considered. And it's not until I get deep down into these shadowy areas that I'm really starting to see any sort of noise whatsoever. You can see here just a little bit of noise in the green shading uh, for what was essentially a completely black image um, based on the initial exposure. So now if I go back over to the comparison view between the R5 and the 5DSR, this is where we'll start to see a difference in the sensor performance. On the left is the three-stop underexposed image of the R5 that I lifted in post to look like a normally exposed image. And on the right is the 5DSR image that was underexposed by three stops and lifted up to a comparable exposure as well. And you can see pretty clearly right away that the 5DSR image quality fell apart pretty quickly. It is a very noisy output and the R5 image on the left is much more clear and retains quite a bit more detail than the 5DSR on the right. So this particular part of the scene is pretty telling where you can see a lot of the different shades of green were maintained in the R5's image, while on the 5DSR, you can tell that this is a vine with green leaves on it, but there's very little green color variation and much of the scene is lost to noise. So I think in closing this was about the result that I'd expected where the newer sensor of the Canon R5 performs much better when lifting shadows than the older sensor of the 5DSR. The 5DSR image might perform better when looking at the pure detail in a properly exposed image but the raw files of the Canon R5 will lend a tremendous amount more flexibility in editing than the images from the 5DSR. In closing, the R5 maintains quite a bit of the image fidelity even when pushed to extremes. However, uh, the 5DSR falls apart much more quickly and I think as long as the image is properly exposed for, the 5DSR has the superior image quality by maybe one or two percent, but for occasions where there could be very challenging lighting, uh, I think the performance here of the Canon R5 easily outstrips the performance of the 5DSR. And once again, just looking at this section with 
the different colored leaves on this vine in the tree, uh, really a lot of good color is maintained in the shadows of the R5 image that was dramatically underexposed, where on the 5DSR side, there is a tremendous amount of noise that is really flowing through in this shadowy section. So about what I expected, but it's cool to see just how well this R5 image performs. I know that when I'm out hiking, if there's ever going to be a really challenging scene, that the ability to lift the shadows so dramatically will really make me feel much more comfortable when I'm out shooting in challenging light. For the sake of comparison, we'll pull up the Canon R's image. So this is the R5 on the left, the Canon R on the right, also underexposed by three stops. And when I zoom into 100%, I'm actually quite impressed by how well the Canon R image maintained all of the detail and color in the shadows that were lifted. And it really looks almost as good as the R5. Uh, I'm very impressed. Uh, so this was a bit of a surprise as I was looking through the results. And I think if I choose this same general area, if I zoom really far in, I can kind of start to see some noise coming through in the Canon R image. But all things considered, I think the Canon R performed extremely well when underexposing by three stops and lifting the shadows of the final image. And the final test that I wanted to do between the Canon R5 and the 5DSR was how each performed at a higher ISO. So for the vast majority of my photography, I tend to sit right at ISO 100, um, very static scenes that don't typically require the higher sensitivity that the R5 is purportedly much better at. But I did want to test because occasionally I will go up to ISO 800 if it's a particularly challenging scene and I need to maintain a higher shutter speed in challenging light. So right off the bat, I'm seeing a huge difference between the Canon R5 here on the left and the 5DSR here on the right. Uh, sort of the same story as the three stop underexposed image where the Canon R5 looks as if it was shot at ISO 100 or 200 on the 5DSR. When I scroll down to look at some of the more challenging lighting in the deep shadows, uh, again, I'm seeing a lot more noise in the 5DSR image where surprisingly on the R5, the image is remarkably clean. The end result of this comparison was a bit of a surprise. I was expecting a little bit more grain in the image from the R5 that I'm seeing, uh, where I did expect to see a good amount of noise in the 5DSR image, but this R5 image is remarkably clean. It really surprised me. Even in the deepest part of the shadows, these leaves still have a tremendous amount of detail and all the different shades of green uh, the, color, the color fidelity really is there, even with a higher sensitivity. So again, this is a great result and definitely really reassuring that if the light ends up being really challenging or for whatever reason it's very dark, either late at night or very early in the morning, I can use the R5 and get comparable image quality to the 5DSR without having to push the sensor in the same way that I would with the 5DSR. So this is a great result, uh, especially when I look in challenging areas like this part of the scene where there's some very bright highlights, some very dark shadows, and I'm not seeing hardly any noise at all in the R5's image where in the 5DSR image, uh, the, the colors seem a little bit off and I'm seeing a lot more noise in certain parts of the image. 
we can switch over to the Canon R and see how the ISO 800 image appears for this camera body. So if we look at the same section we were just looking at with the R5 and 5DSR, the detail difference aside, it's actually quite good. Um, I know that the fine intricate details aren't there on the Canon R like they are with the R5 image on the left, but as far as noise and detail in the shadows, it's actually looking pretty decent for a camera sensor that's already, what, five or six years old. There are some parts of the image, like this section, where the R5 is clearly superior. I'm seeing a little bit of noise creep in in the deepest shadows from the Canon R. And even when I zoom out, you can still see some of that noise in the shadow section. In closing, I think the Canon R is an exceptional camera and has treated me very well for a number of years. Uh, but I do think the upgrade to the R5 makes sense when considering the increased detail capture rivals the 5DSR, the low light is an improvement, and lastly, the video performance of the R5 is better in just about every way compared to the Canon R, which is to be expected uh, given the difference in price point. Well, I hope you found this comparison useful. I think the R5 is a stellar all-around performing camera, and I'm definitely looking forward to learning even more about it and how I can best put it to use. And let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are as far as the difference between the performance of the Canon R5 and the 5DSR. So I've got my collection of nine images. It's everything packed away. So I'm heading back slowly into the woods where I found a cool spot along the creek. I'm going to stop there and have some breakfast. Finally found a nice quiet spot along the creek. Stop and take a bit of a rest. Well, I don't think it was a morning of portfolio images. Uh, it was great to get out and do some photography this morning, and I hope that you found the comparison valuable between the R5, 5DSR, and Canon R. I think I'm still going to stick with my 5DSR though. 
and if the R5 is even half as good as I suspect it to be, then my Canon R will end up on eBay this week, uh, which will be sad to let it go, but very happy that somebody else will get to enjoy it because it really is a spectacular camera. So, not exactly the most scenic or epic location this morning, but uh, I do have quite a few trips planned for the next few months and am really, really looking forward to this summer and fall. So, thanks as always for watching. Stay tuned for those trips, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.